Welcome to Jill on Money, powered by The Compound. I'm Jill Schlesinger. He's Mark Talercio and uh, sounder of claps. Mark, you look so much better today. I, I'm not quite sure how to respond to that. You so look like crap the last time. Come on. You did. Why? Because uh, I wore a hat? You wore a hat and you didn't look like, you, you weren't shaven. It was bad. It was bad. This is a visual medium, man. What are you thinking? I, I made a point yesterday to shave. Yes, thank after, you. After I fed Theo dinner, I said, Theo, I'll be in the bathroom if you need me. I got to go shave. Okay. I said, because I have to go to the office tomorrow. Right, because Aunt Jill's making me. Uh, yeah, so uh, I showered. I brushed my hair. Doesn't he look better, people? He looks so much better. I'm so happy about this. Mm. Also, I brought some uh, some powder so that you didn't get a shiny forehead. Also, Nicole, queen of compound media, is like, Hey, guys, we're recording a bunch of these at the same time. How about some different tops? Yeah. So Mark and I have costume changes, uh, like Diana Ross in the 80s. Right, you, right, Is that a reference that you would get in Only You? I, I know Diana Ross, All absolutely. Right. Okay. So you look fabulous. Thank you. So do you. You look fabulous. I, I, I need my glasses. I went to the ophthalmologist yesterday, and I'm like, dude, I cannot freaking see the screen. He's like, now we have to create a special pair of glasses that are only for computer use. It's a broad, that's such a bummer. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, glasses full time now. I was contacts for, I don't know, 20 something years, but just like last year, I got to the point where I was wearing the contacts. It, it's just not working. So <sighs> I do want to go back and see if I can do the dailies because that's what Amanda- The dailies are good. Yeah, that's what Amanda has because yeah. because I don't like wearing glasses on very, very bright, sunny days. I want to wear sunglasses. You need cool glasses. And I know people say, oh, you can get the prescription glasses that change. No, those are weird. Yeah, I don't want that. No, those are weird. That's like my grandfather. He would wear like dark glasses inside. Forget about it. So I, I do want to get the dailies. Okay. Now, now, by the way, thank you for this. Thanks for everybody here for coming in and joining us. This is a program where we are answering questions about your financial journey. I, I say journey because I feel like I say your financial life. It's really anything going on in your life that touches your finances. It is so a journey. Here's the deal. If something's going on, go to jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button, complete the form, and Mark does everything else. If you want to join us on this show, it's really easy to do. While you're on the website, don't forget to sign up for our free weekly newsletter. Mark does an amazing job. Every Friday comes out. Also, other things that you need to do. Number, oh, my book is now out in paperback. The Great Money Reset is out in paperback. Do you know how I figured that out, Mark? Uh, no. You, did that pub, did I include you on that publisher email where she's like, do this? Like, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I had no idea the drop date, a check landed in my account. Oh. It was the happiest day, like of the last month. Right. I was like, wait, where'd this money come from? Ah, it's for the, it's for the paperback. I was so happy. Uh, anyway, Mark did not get a piece of that. So Mark's <laughs> compensation is tied to Jill on Money Live. This is our live service where you join us for four live webinars and tons of bonus video content. All of our content lives on the jillonmoney.com website. And we are delighted, by the way, so we are here on the Compound Media world. Don't forget, if you're watching this, you know that there's so many great things that are uh, that are put out. There's Ask the Compound, there's Animal Spirits, there's the Compound and Friends, everything is out there. Check all of this content out. All right, now, today, we are talking to a recidivist listener who has been on the air a long time ago already, in 2018. John from Houston is back. John, welcome to the program. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much, Jill and Mark, for having me. I'm super excited to talk to you guys again. So here's the big question. How have you been over the last six years? <laughs> <laughs> Great. You know, some ups and downs, but but I'm still here. All right. So um, what, yeah, life is good. when you came on six years ago, what was the, what, what why did you join us then? Yeah. I, so we had a couple of things going on. We were in the middle of a surrogacy journey for our second child. And I'm happy to say we have a very vibrant two-year-old girl along with our seven-year-old boy. Um, I had also been working for a company that was acquired. So job security was questionable. And my mother was about to retire. And I was looking to help her out by possibly paying off her mortgage. And was I, wasn't I i a dream crusher in that you particular? Were a dream crusher. Yes, correct. You are a dream crusher. So I did not pay off my mother's mortgage. And she did retire. And her teacher retirement actually ended up being higher than her paycheck. So everything worked out perfectly. Come on. That's good. <laughs> okay, so we're done. Thanks. Thanks for the update. Yeah, Bye. So what? So you have, wait a second. You have a two-year-old girl. You have a seven-year-old boy. You're busy. Correct. Yes, we're very busy. Uh, let's just go through a few of the facts, though. How old are you, John? 
I am 41. And you're married, right? Married. Spouse is how old? He is 43. And I said this off the air, but I just would like to point out that the compound media is ju- is really, we're beefing up on our gay content right now. We're going to have a whole LGBTQ channel. Just <laughs> kidding. Um, Mark, friend of the gays. Thank you. Um, Mark's like two closest people in your life are a yeah. gay female couple and a gay male couple. That is true. 100%. It's amazing. So John, are you guys both working right now? We are. And how much do you guys earn together? So I'm at 236 and he's around 150. That's great. Yeah. And so two kids from one kid has a cash flow. Um so cash flow is fine. Um we we we're saving a lot which we can get into. Um but monthly cash flow we probably have 7 800 dollars left over oh. to take home. All right, that's yeah. great. So what's what's the the impetus to the call today? So it actually stems from a call you took a couple months ago and you made a comment about people that have large amounts of money in their brokerage accounts that they are not utilizing. Mm. So I glanced at our account and we have about $800,000 just in brokerage. Not, by the way, nice to glance at account at an account and see that you have $800,000. Yeah, like how shocking. <laughs> I was like, I, I got 20 grand from my paperback book. He gets 800 grand that shows up in his brokerage account. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else do you have? What's in retirement right now? Um, let me pull up my list. So we have, um, 750,000 in an IRA, mm-hmm. 85 in a Roth in active, um, retirement accounts. I have 118,000 in Roth. My husband has about 300,000 in pre-tax 401k. Okay. Will either of you be entitled to a pension? No, unfortunately okay. not. Don't complain. You're in the right business at the right time. You, Although not this year as much, but uh, okay. We're going to make assumptions about where you live, by the way, since you're in Houston. We kind of imagine the way, what's Most going. Most of them are probably true. Exactly right. So um, you guys own your home, right? We do. How much is it worth? Uh, so it's probably worth 900000 Oh. In Houston. Well, how, how big a house is that, babe? Let me hear about the square footage. It's 3,100 square feet, um, but the, the the key here is we're in one of the best elementary schools in HISD, so. Wow. Okay. So you're all in for public school, at least for now. At least for now. Okay. Uh, how about an outstanding mortgage on that 900,000, 3,100 square feet, Mark? You wouldn't even know what to do with no, all that I space. Really <laughs> it's crazy. Um, how, what's your outstanding mortgage? So we're at 350 mm-hmm. and it's two and 2.75 interest. Does that hurt you? Does that actually hurt you, Mark, when you hear 2.75? The interest rate, yeah. Hey, what, are, what are you going to do? It is what it is. You've let it go. Yep. All right. We're into letting go. I got Mark a little Zen raking garden. And- in, in case in case people aren't aware, I, I recent, we, my wife and I recently bought a new place and the mortgage rate is a whopping six and a quarter. I mean, it probably seems good right now compared yeah. to what it could have been. Um, and uh, how many square feet, Mark? Uh, maybe 14, 1500. That's like kind of the same as me. Um, we live in very, sh- you know what? New York is, we learn to live in small spaces. Mm-hmm. One of my, my first apartment, what was your studio? How many square feet was that? 350, 400. No way. That's teeny. For a decade. I never, I never was in that apartment, was I? No. 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 Um, my first apartment in New York was a rent stabilized apartment on 63rd street between second and third. And it was 650 square feet and it was $600 a month. Yeah. 1987. 1987. Yeah. Mine was 350, 400. And for a decade, I paid $1,000 a month. The owners never increased the rent. You were such a good tenant. They loved you. They loved me. I never met them. They they lived on the West Coast. Amazing. All right. Now let's get back to John. So John, you're staying in the house. You got a bunch of money. uh, And- You've got this extra seven or eight hundred bucks a month that's coming in. Plus, you have this brokerage account. Um, what's the game plan here? Are we are you putting money away for the kids for college or what? We are. So we've been contributing a five twenty nine since they were born. Mm. We do seven hundred per month per kid. Okay. My thought was since we had extra funds in our brokerage um, to use some of that and reallocate it and super fund their five twenty nines. I like that, Mark. Don't you? Okay. Good. Right, Mark, are you into that? Like the super fun then? Yeah. Just do it and get it over do with. Do it and done. I mean, we're gonna th- I mean, I guess the downside is you put too much money in, right? I guess that is a possibility. How much money's in there right now? 
So for the older child, we have 46,000. In our two-year-old, we have 25,000. Are we thinking of funding a public or a private education? I think we might want to split the difference a bit. Um, I could see at least the older child maybe going out of state, but public school. Um, so yeah, we, d- we definitely don't want to fully fund a private school. I don't think we're going to go that direction, uh-huh. um, but maybe a little more than an in-state tuition, if that makes sense. Hook them horns. Is that how you do it? Uh, like that? <laughs> Is that hook them horns? Hook them horns. Yes. Okay. There you go. All right. Perfect. Um, Mark, how much money could the the guys put into this 529 to kind of push this through and and kind of give you a little bit of a, a bump up so they don't have to think about funding this? They could just get it over with. Yeah, right I now. think what's the 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 limit this year is eighteen thousand. Yep. Times basically five years. Right. And they can both do it. So, so that's ninety and ninety, right? Yeah. I mean, they could easily put in. You know, I don't. I don't think they have to put in that full amount just based on what he just said about yeah. you know not going the private route. But what they, if they put in? What if they put in fifty each? Yeah, for sure. I Would mean, that do it to have a hundred grand in for older one? Yeah. And seventy five, or do they need a little more? Where's the older one's current balance right now? Let me see. You got to learn to listen, my man. 46. This is why- 46 I, Look at this. Let me just show you guys. Theater of the mind. This is what happens when I'm talking to you, okay? I'm, I'm writing notes down, copious notes. Here you go. You can see this, John, right? Okay. I'm writing your notes down. Um, and I always do that. So we have 46 and seven-year-olds, 25 and two-year-olds. Yeah, I mean, if you put in fifty thousand dollars right now, especially for the six, six, seven year old, he's going to be going to be in good shape. But good shape, and they'll still have money. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to. It's not like you're draining your brokerage account, and you don't have really. There's nothing coming up that you might need a big chunk of this money for. Uh, no, we're going to do house renovations probably over the next year, um, so it'll take a bit of that. But how much? Not more than, well, we just did our bathroom, and that was probably thirty-five thousand. Um, you so hear that, Mark? Guess- thirty-five thousand for a bathroom yeah. in Houston. Okay, thanks. Right, we have we have solid contractors. Here. Yeah, I bet. Um, so I, I imagine probably if we do everything we want to, it'll be another seventy-five thousand. Um, okay, and honestly, we paid we paid the bathroom out of out of cash flow over the last year. Oh, that's awesome. So we, didn't, we didn't touch our. Brokerage. Where's that brokerage account? Are you managing it somewhere? I moved everything last year. I was with an active manager and I moved everything to Vanguard Digital Advisor. Oh, how's that working out for you? I really like it. Okay. Um, I, I feel like if I was managing it myself, I'd be a little more OCD about it. Um, but using the digital advisor, um, I, I, I really just kind of let it be. And uh, it's been great. Is there money in cash in the brokerage right now or not? No, everything's invested. Do you have any? So we're, if we want to do something for these kids... We have to harvest either some gains or some losses. Tell me what's going on in this account. Correct. Um, so I've only had it for less than a year. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't think there's going to be a huge amount of capital gains. My tax bill for this year is going to be quite a bit because of the switch from the active um, mm-hmm. over to Vanguard. Okay. So I think selling from this year is just going to be the gains for the past 10 months or so. Although that could be significant. Are there any losses? Do you have some? Do you have any losses? Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. Hmm. I hate to like have you. I hate to take big gains on this account. So if you're reallocating anyway, uh, I don't want you to go crazy with this because I don't want to trigger a massive tax hit to you. Right. Do you agree with that, Mark? I would like to avoid a massive. I would tax like, hit. yeah. So a medium <laughs> tax hit, I would say. I don't know. Like I'm thinking that you know, even if you if if it's like twenty five each, that's fine, and then you can, you know. But but I will. I'm. I like the idea of super funding it. I like the idea of having it done for you. I like the idea of cash flow. I don't love the idea of paying taxes if we really don't have to. So if possible, um, if we can limit the taxes, if you're like, oh, no problem. We got, you know, we can grab a hundred grand and pay very low tax capital gains after you hold it for a year, not short term. So it has to be a year. Okay. When did you switch over? I switched over, I think in May. Yeah. You're going to have to wait. No short-term capital gains. So wait for the year. Yeah, because yep. that's ordinary income. Gang, you sell a stock, you sell a mutual fund, you sell an ETF, and you hold it for less than a year. It's just added to your ordinary income. <laughs> Bad choice. That was a little New York cheer for you. Did you hear that? Just just for some reference, if you were to put twenty five thousand grand in right now into the older child's account for you know eleven years or so, you're going to be looking at about a hundred and roughly one hundred and forty thousand dollars. 
Well, I mean, yeah, but we have inflation rate of school, of education yeah, costs, I, I, right? I don't know what the future cost of school is going to be, but that's what you're going to be looking about when the child is around 18 or so, 140 right. grand for college. And you know what? If you're short, you're going to have this big You'll fat have, brokerage account. Yeah, you can always wait to like pop the extra money in when you do have a loss. Like when you're doing your tax loss harvesting at the end of the year with Vanguard Digital Advisor, then you say, I want to make sure I sell my losers and take whatever losses you have and just pop some money into the 529 account. Like use that as part of your reallocation strategy. I think that works for sure. Okay. And you said per year it's up to the eighteen thousand. Right. So it's eighteen thousand dollars per person, thirty six thousand as a couple. So you know you can each in any given year you can give thirty six thousand dollars a year away to anybody. And the only difference with a five twenty nine is the rule is that in and you should check the Texas rule. Are you using the Texas five twenty nine plan? No, because we don't have state income tax, so I'm using the New, new York. Plan. All right, NewYorkSaves.com. Um, Mark, do you know the limit on the New York Saves? It's 200-something thousand, I think, in a given year. Yeah, it's very high. It's very high. So uh, check the rules. Each each plan will guide you as to what their actual amount will be. And it's great. And, you know, it sounds like you guys are in such amazing shape. But then once you have the seven or $800 extra in the cash flow that you're that, you know, you're socking away, you can either put in the brokerage account if you're, it depends on how much you end up putting in the 529. But I think you're in such good shape. Are you, um, are you workaholics? Are you going to keep working forever? Are you going to be one of these 40 somethings, which we've heard from quite recently, Mark, we've had a lot of 40 somethings who are like, I really just want to work for five more years. So not 40 something, but the plan is for my husband to either reduce hours at 55 or, or retire fully. And then I would probably work at least until the kids are, are out of college and hopefully launched. Why? Do you didn't like his job? He's okay with his job. Um, it's it's a little high stress. He would prefer to stay home and take care of the, the chickens um, is his game plan. Okay. So. And you're on it. And you don't spend that much money. What are you, what's your expense about your expenses for real? Relative to our, our total intake, I don't think it's a lot, but our, our monthly expenses are probably 17000 and that's inclusive of vacations and property taxes and, and all that. 17000 okay. That's, that's, a that's a real number. That's a real number. Dude, that is a real number. Uh, what <laughs> happens, wait a second, what happens when, in this at uh, age 55, which let's see, he's 43, in 12 years, do you think it's still that high? Or is that because of childcare or what? Yeah, some of it's childcare. We still have one in daycare, mm. and um, you know, kind of our flex expenses expenses for the kids are are, are pretty high right now, um, in terms of activities and just kid stuff. So, so he just wait that. a second, just so I'm clear about this. You're very good spouse. So I'm clear. Uh, you make two thirty six. He right. makes one fifty. So this is a good chunk of money, right? I get it. You're you're spending two hundred thousand dollars a year, all in. Are you telling me that that 200 you think is going to remain 200 even when you're when he's 55 or do you think that's likely to go down? He ain't retiring at 55 if you're still spending 200 that's inflated every year. Agreed. So some of it will make up because our savings rate is very high right now. Oh wait a minute. So you're when- wait a second. You're saying the 17 includes savings? So 17 is what we spend um, what I'm saying for retirement savings is we're maxing out our 401ks and I'm am currently maxing out a backdoor um, Roth okay. as well. Okay. So we can offset some of the income loss just by not saving. Hopefully we won't have to be saving as much um, in you know 12 or 13 years. Any more kids? No, we are done. Oh, wow. Did you got that? <laughs> no. Right. no. Let's see the look on his face. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> do you have all of your estate documents done? You have your insurance in place? Everything good? Uh, we have estate documents. We need to update them. They have uh, generic children in them, but we haven't updated them with their <laughs> actual children. Um, Let's get I, that I, done. I did, uh, you mentioned it, I think, this week on, on one of the podcasts. I paid for the legal um, benefit through work. Great. So um, we'll t- get that taken care of. This All show. right. What else can we do for you? Uh, yeah. I, so going forward, you know, like you said, with these extra funds, uh, my plan was just to put them in brokerage. Yeah. It feels like we're maxing out all the tax advantage yes. stuff that we can. Absolutely. Um, so just, just keep on plowing through the brokerage. Are you guys doing an HSA? 
Yeah. So I started a new job a year and a half ago, and uh, that's how I got access to the back door. And they have a, a pretty generous HSA. So Great. we're maxing out HSA as okay. well. Okay. Yeah. Then it's a lot I, going on. I, I, you're you're maxing out basically all the accounts that you can be. John uh, and husband. So yeah, just do the brokerage account. Yeah. Spending like crazy. T t t crazy. These are the guys, when people talk about like, oh, I hope my neighborhood gets gentrified by gay men who make a lot of money. This is who they're talking about, John and his husband. These guys are in their 40s. They basically have 1.8-ish million dollars. They make a ton they're, of they're money. They're going to be saving a lot for the next decade plus. They're, but they make a ton of money. Yeah. they're. I mean, they're going to be in really solid shape. All right. All right. Uh, Another member of the Jillionaires Club. Uh, John, you're the best. Thank you for joining us Thank today. You. Uh, Mark, I, I am always shocked at how much money people are able to save in their 40s. I feel like this is these, wow. what happened? Did I you just, just fall just, like, down? I slipped off the chair, like <laughs> busted my elbow. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was good. Do you need... <laughs> Sorry, gang. Uh, it's like watching someone slip on a piano field. <laughs> That's kind of what it felt like. <laughs> it was great. Um, Do you want to hold up your prop about what, you know, you already, where is your banana peel? There's Mark and I his bag my, of nuts my, my, and he already yeah. ate his nuts. He's good. Um, all right, gang, if you like John and his husband are just trying to figure out how to maximize all the great saving you're doing, give us a holler. But you don't have to be in such strong financial shape. You can actually be up Blanks Creek without a paddle and we will help you out. Or you might just need some help with prioritization. If that's the case, go to jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button, we'll get your note. If you wanna join us via audio, that's fine. But video, this show, isn't this great? It's fantastic. So we so appreciate that you joined us and do so every single weekend. Check out everything at jillonmoney.com. Thank you to Duncan, John, Daniel, Nicole, even Rob, the boss is in the house and everyone at the compound for putting this show together. Uh, we say this on every program. We like to remind you to do something nice for someone else today. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you.